Hi dear friends, this is Shatanik here. Today we have a study by Alexander Hobsman, who was once again a great composer of the Soviet era. Today's study is quite a famous one and I'm sure the solution will entertain you all. So as you can see, black hair is a head in material. He has three extra pawns and one of which is only a move away from queening. But at the same time, you have to observe that black's king is stuck here on h8, which is not a very favorable situation. That is why it is kind of hard to evaluate this position. This position is actually quite double-edged. So for instance, if white starts with c6 to c7 here, well, that is the most natural move to make. So after c6 to c7, if black goes rook to c4 with the idea of stopping this pawn from promoting then already black is completely lost because white has rook into a4 and white is mating in a few moves the idea is now white will play c8 queen and after the rook takes that queen on c8 white will get in rook into h4 check and that will the end, that will be the end of the game so for instance if black goes c1 queen here then white plays c8 queen and it's a check so black has to take and after that comes rook into h4 check and this is decisive because after queen to h6 rook into h6 is check net so going back this is really a tricky position black is materially up but white has some tricks up his sleeve based on the fact that black's king on h8 is quite compromised but I will tell you this that with perfect play from both sides this is going to end in a draw so it is actually white to move and draw in this position so now it is over to you pause this video right here and think about this position for a while try to find the most testing moves and exciting moves for both sides and see if you can calculate out the logical outcome Okay, I hope you gave it a good think. So the solution starts with c6, c7 obviously because the c pawn is white's only trump in the position and he must push it. And now black can't really play c, rook to c4 with the idea of stopping the c pawn because then we have seen that white has rook into a4 with the idea of rook into h4 check followed by mate. So what does black do instead? Black goes rook to f4 check he throws in a check and now white has to go king to g6 and only now when the king white king has been deflected from f7 to g6 black goes rook to c4 white plays rook into a4 anyway that is the most challenging move that he can play with the idea of displacing this rook on c4 okay Observe now that since the white king has moved from f7 to g6, black need not worry about rook into h4 anymore. Rather, the new threat here in the position is rook to a8 checkmate. And black has to stop rook to a8. That is the decisive threat. So what does black do? Well, black doesn't have many choices. So if black goes uh, c1 queen here then simply rook to a8 is checkmate uh, rook into a4 also doesn't make any sense because then white promotes and that's checkmate so the only the only way to, to save the game for black here is is to go rook to g4 check white also has to take on g4 and now things start to get interesting because now black promotes c1 queen well white promotes as well but black captures that white that queen black plays queen to c8 now the question to you is is black winning in this position well not really because this black king is still stuck on a very unfavorable spot white still has some tricks up his sleeve 
and black is not really winning in this position. So now white goes for the direct king to f7. The threat is rook into h4 net. What does black do? Well, the only sensible move is queen to d8, supporting this pawn on h4. Okay, black black can't really play a move like queen to c2. I mean, it doesn't make any sense because then after that, rook into h4, queen h7, rook into h7, king into h7. This is a complete draw because after king f6, this pawn on d7 is completely under control. So, queen to d8 is the most sensible move to make supporting this h4 pawn. But now comes rook to g6. Once again, threatening rook h6 checkmate. Black has to go king h7 here, but white plays rook to h6 check anyway. And now after king into h6, this is a draw, this is a stalemate. So that is the end of the study, the whole variation. Not a difficult study, but the play has a very pleasurable flow. But it is not easy to guess the evaluation of the position from the initial diagram here. So in this initial diagram, black is up three pawns, but white is able to generate a sharp counterplay with c7, rook into a4, and so on. So the play, so the game continues this way, c7, Black has to go rook f4 check, throw in a check first, then after king g6, he goes rook to c4, uh, stopping the c pawn from promoting, and now white comes with rook into a4. Very sharp counterplay, threatening rook a8 checkmate. And after that, black goes rook g4 check, rook into g4. Black gives up the rook to promote his pawn. White also promotes, but black captures the promoted pawn. And now in this position, we see a, see a very unexpected stalemate variation. White goes king to f7, threatening rook into h4 mate. Black plays queen to d8, supporting the pawn on h4. And now after rook to g6, king to h7, rook h6, king into h6, this is a stalemate, a draw. So I hope you enjoyed the study. We will be back tomorrow with something new. Till then, goodbye and take care.